Well, would you look at this? It actually finished printing a Benchy. Hello, welcome to Scratch 3 Printing. In this video, I have another box here to unbox for you. Um, this is from Triangle Lab. Let's scratch to this topic. Let's go ahead and unbox this. Just to let you know, Triangle did not send me this. I bought this myself because of a problem that I have with a specific 3D printer, especially the K2 Plus. So this is for K2 Plus. See if we will be able to fix that problem. So on the K2 Plus, the extruder gear, they advertise that it's just, you know, plastic. So I got these from Triangle Lab and these are extruder gears. They say that these are metal. It's gonna be so much more durable. It's gonna be so much better. The reason why I got this is just that the K2 Plus cannot print GPU flexible filament. I try and it really can't print them. I feel like the tension for the filament is like way too rough, way too hard. So I don't know. I'm just gonna buy these and see if it's gonna fix that. Maybe, maybe not. These are filament extruder gear. Um, the, the teeth will run together and then the small groove right here is gonna pull in the filament to the hot end. These also have small bearings inside them, so it's a direct drop in place. I also got another thing from Triangle Lab here, and this is also for the K2 Plus. I believe it's the hot end, yes. It is the hot end for the K2 Plus. Um, yeah, it's been out for a while now, but I just feel like I need an upgrade for the K2 Plus to make it print a little bit better. And I will compare this with the original and see if there's any differences. But first, let's take out this cover and just look at it right now. This is like ceramic heating and this thing can heat up all the way to 350C. So it's like that. And this is a unicorn style nozzle. So um, it's going to be a little bit better. Let's go ahead and take off the K2 Plus hot end and drop this in and see if there's any difference in printing quality. Okay, now I'm going to be replacing the whole hot end and the two extruder that drives the filament. So I'm going to show you how to take those off. First, we're going to take out this cover on the K2 Plus. You can just take this off. There's no wire, there's nothing. That is very convenient. I love this design. First, let's take off the extruder and then we will do the hot end. In order to take off the extruder, we need to take off this screw and this screw right here. Okay, here we go. We got two screw off. These two, one is longer, one is shorter. The long one goes on the bottom, the short one goes on top. Now that we got those two off, there's another screw on the right hand side right here. That's the one that we're going to take off too. Here we go. Now that we got that, there's two more on the side right here. So we'll take this one and this one off. So these two right here. So this one and this one. In order to do this properly, you will want to have the machine off. This wire up here that connects to the motor, that's the wire. We're gonna disconnect the wire and we're gonna take off this tube. Let's take off the bolting tube first. It's a little tight, so I'm gonna use my ply right here or whatever this thing is. Okay, we got the wire off. Be very careful. You don't want to strip any of the wire. If you do, you may have to buy a replacement for it. There's also one more wire down here, which connects right here. So we're going to take this one off too. Press it and pull it. There we go. Well, this thing just came off. Usually at this point, you want to press the tension right here, and then you will disconnect this from the motor here. But it looks like it came off by itself. This is the mechanism. So if you press this lever right here, you see that the gear inside disconnect a little bit. See that? It moves back a little bit. But since we already got this out, I'm gonna bring this to my table. I'm gonna break this apart. Okay, I will be disassembling this. It says that caution, spring may pop out. So there is a spring inside of here, so you have to be very careful. But in order to replace these two uh, extruder gear in there, you need to take this apart. And once again, these are the two gears that I'm gonna be replacing. So let's put it over here. We can see that this has a cutout in the middle, so we can just take this apart, but be very careful. I forget where the spring is, so I'm just gonna YOLO it. I also think we need to take off this screw right here. And now I will be very careful of removing this. Okay. Recording this so that I don't screw up anything. Okay, there we go. Looks like there's not a spring like how it is on the Anycubic Cobra S1. Um, the spring where the filament sensor will come down is right here. So that's kind of where it is. And right here, it is the filament sensor. So just a quick run through. The filament will come, go through this spot right here. 
and then it's going to sense the filament. So that's where the filament sensor is. And that is also the filament sensor on the K1 Max for the new CFS. Look at this. This thing's been so smooth. Look at that. I like it. I love working with gears. Now that we got this off, this is the one that we're going to be replacing. So uh, just a quick comparison. Seems that the black portion right here is plastic. And this one right here, they claim that is metal. So this is metal. And this is plastic. Um, looks like these aren't meshing that quite well. When I do this, I feel like there's some friction in there that these are not matching quite well. But if you do the one that it does come with it, it moves very smoothly. I don't know if the teeth count is different. I did not count it. But overall, it looks very similar with each other. And yeah, let's just put this in and see if it will make the Q2 Plus a little bit better. And another thing I noticed here is that the original one, the gears are like longer than these one. These are like three fourths of the size of it. <clears throat> but I'll show you how to replace those. Um, on this piece, it just goes in right here, just going like that. There we go. It goes in like that, like that. The new one is the tolerance is very tight, like this. The shaft is stuck in there now. I noticed that the original one spins a lot smoother, like this. But if we put in the new version, it doesn't spin that well. Hmm, I don't know. Well, let's give it a test then. Okay, now that we got the other piece in there, time to take out this one. This one's a little bit more tricky, especially since um, the tension knob right here is attached to the extruder gear here. So you need to take this off in order to take this one out. Let's see if I can take this off without having the spring fly out. Um, I guess just hold my hand right here so that the spring does not fly towards me. And I don't think so, yeah. Yep, I don't think we can do it. So I'm just going to take out everything here. And... I just dropped the spring. Okay, in order to take this off, you need to take out the shaft here. So just punch the shaft through. Like that. And now we can take this out. And we can put in a new one, just like so. And now we can put in the shaft back. Make sure that it sits flush on both sides. And this thing spins smoothly. Okay, now that we have this, we can put it back. I feel like as long as this thing right here, it does not pop out. Um, you're pretty much good because this I think it'll be very difficult to put in so it's good that we really make this it just don't pop out and right here is the blade where it cuts the filament here the filament goes down there and come through here the filament sensor start with that there's also a very small barrier in there so just make sure you have all of those pieces in there okay to put this back we just do it the opposite way um, the spring is going to go in here. So what I like to do is put the spring in here first so that a little bit of it goes inside here. Put it at an angle so that it slides in here. And then push in like this. There we go. Look at that. You just do that. And then use like a an wrench and push in the spring so that it lines up with this. And if you use this, you can see that it lines up. Let's say you don't know if you got this correct. What you can do is use a filament and test it right now, put it through and see where the filament comes out. And if the filament comes out over there and it goes to this notch or this cut back here, not the thread here, but over here, then you know that you got it in the correct position. Quickly, before we assemble this, from the look of these, I feel like it's very similar. The huge difference is the gear. To test that, we use a magnet so right here it does not want to attach but here it does want to attach so it does confirm that this is plastic and for the new one we can see that right there it attached so it's metal so this is a fully metal one and this is just plastic it's moving away so I'm not sure if there will be a huge difference with here because this is exactly where the filament is gonna um, hit that's just the gear. So this would definitely last longer, but I want this to be the improvement. But we will see. And to put this thing back together, you just sandwich it. It's like this, the filament sensors right here, so it goes on top. And you just line everything in there. 
There we go. To test to make sure everything runs smoothly, spin the gear right here. And if we look inside there, everything is spinning smoothly. And just quickly test here. Let's run a filament through it. So we can see that the film is going through. Right there. And we pull on it. It runs through it. Very nicely. This screw will go right here to hold these two pieces together. I almost drop it. Okay, now I'm going to remove the hot end and replace it. In order to remove this, we need to remove these two screws right here. If you cannot get the screw to come out, use a magnet. Just like that. Look at that. That is so nice. I'm going to unplug the wire right here. It's such a tight space. Let's use this. There we go. There's also two additional screws right here that we need to remove. Okay, so once we have those four screws removed, this thing will just come out like that. So this whole hot end just need four screws to be removed. Let's compare these. Okay, this is the old one and this is the new one right here. The new one is on the right, the old one is on the left. So if we compare them, um, looks very, very similar. As you can see there, it looks super similar. Um, the heat sink is almost identical. It can be locked in right there. That is really cool. Does it seem that this hole is a little bit bigger? Right? It seems that this screw hole for the new one is a little bit bigger. It's very, very similar in size, everything like that. But this one advertised to be heated up to 350C. Creality one, it's only up to 300C. And the new one is also ceramic heating, so I guess it heats up faster. Okay, we got these removed. And yeah, I think it looks just really similar like the original one. Um, of course, the difference is here. This one has a black connector and this one has a white connector. <laughs> but I don't think that really matters at all. I think they're just really similar. I don't even know what the difference is. But hey, this one advertised to be an upgrade over this dock. So we're just gonna put it on the K2 Plus and see if this will print better than the original. I assume that this one will print better than the original or up to par or even better. To install this back, you just do it the opposite way. Make sure that these two screw holes are facing towards you. Make sure that the wire has some place to come out and connect it over here. So I'm gonna place it here and screw in the top screw up here to secure in place before we do anything else and even though it seems that the holes are a little bit bigger it still fits that don't over tight because like that i kind of over tight and it's not level so make sure that you put both screw in and make sure you tight them evenly so that it's very horizontal and you have a better first layer now that we got those two screw in i'm going to be plugging this here just like that make sure that they are snug in there and just put it to the side like that now that we got that in we're gonna screw in these two screw at the front now that we got the hot end in we're gonna install the extruder okay to install the extruder back um you will want to plug in the bottom wire and the top wire first make sure that it goes all the way in now we need to line up the motor to the extruder you push in the tensioner right here and then you put it in just like that and to test it once again you can you can move the gear over here and you see that the extruder gear side move make sure that this top wire is out i will be connecting the top wire here now that we got everything we're just gonna push in the motor back like that and now just put in the two screw on the side two screw at the front and one screw on the left back and that's how you change the film extruder and the hot end on the k2 plus okay once we got all of that Put in your bolting tube back. Make sure you put this back. Sometimes I forget and the filament just come out like that. So I'm gonna start this up and do a print and TPU flexible filament and see how it goes. And I also forgot to mention the Triangle Lab hot end does come with two Allen wrench and this wrench right here. You can take out the nozzle using this and screws using these Allen wrench. Oh, and one more thing for a new extruder like this, the first time that you heat up, it's gonna have this very strong like burning smell so just keep that in mind it's nothing new it's just that there's a new fresh nozzle and like a new fresh hot end so it's gonna have this strong burnt smell that is totally normal 
Well, would you look at this? It actually finished printing a Benchy. The new hot end and the new film extruder actually printed a Benchy. That is freaking cool. Look at that. It's not the best, but it printed. And this was Saraya Tech. The filament that it was not able to print a couple of days ago. This is foam TPU. So, so since it was able to print this, I think it was a successful upgrade. Well, would you look at that? It actually printed a Benchy from the K2 Plus. I did not realize that, you know, changing the gear for the extruder and the harden was going to result in being able to print foam TPU from Saraya Tech. I think I butchered the name, but it's okay. Um, yeah, it's not the best because that filament is like super stringy and I really need to dial in the retraction and the print speed and stuff like that. But yeah, look at this. When it was printing continuously, it printed flawlessly. But here it gets to uh, the bridging, stuff like that. It keeps extruding, retracting, extruding, retracting. And it's just very, very stringy. While I am completely shocked that it was able to print the whole Benchy without a clog before doing any of this upgrade. It cannot print foam TPU at all. I tried so many times. I think I tried like five times. I print it, it clogs. I clear it. I clean the nozzle and stuff like that. I reinsert it, extrude it. It just can never extrude. Every single time it was supposed to extrude, it just can't, it just clogged. And when I take out the filament, it's like wiggly, like a worm, like a ass worm like this, right? The filament is just like that and it never goes through the filament extruder gear. But with the upgrades, it printed. I have no idea why, because the part that touches the filament is still metal, like the original one. And the harden, I don't even know what's going on, man. I just upgraded it. I have no idea how those upgrades was able to print from TPU from Saraya Tech. I am surprised if anybody know the reason why using those two upgrades was able to uh, print TPU when it literally cannot print TPU. Tell me, tell me in the comments down below because Saria Tech did reach out to me saying that, look at this form here. This is how you're able to print TPU with Creality K1 Max or K2 Plus 3D printers. This is how you print with TPU. So they have all these kind of steps for you to do, make the tensioner like less tensions so that it would nicely extrude the filament. But I did not do any of that. I just upgraded it and it works. Now that it works, I'm gonna try and print myself some Crocs shoes. <laughs> I did it before on the Cobra S1, but it wasn't printed that nicely. Um, if you have a K2 Plus and you can't print with TPU filament, flexible filament, maybe try these upgrade by getting the extruder gear filament. That's what I call it. I don't know the actual thing because it's extruding and the filament goes through it. So extruder filament gear and the harden from Triangle Lab. I don't know. Well, links will be in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you still have any questions, leave a comment down below. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel because more amazing videos like this is coming. And if you haven't yet become a member of the YouTube channel, it helps me tremendously. Thank you so much for watching and as always, keep on 3D printing.